I am Anil Kumar sharing with you questions from previous test papers. We are doing introduction to vectors. The course is MCV for you. Now I observed that most of the test papers are just repeated and the students really don't are not really interested in learning a lot. And even my videos which I have more than thousand on vectors, only those which are connected with the test papers are being watched most. So I thought without wasting time, let me go through the test papers. So here is one of the previous test paper. You can pause the video, copy these questions, solve them, and I'll pick few of them to make my own test paper. I hope this strategy works for you and is rewarding, right? So here is the next test paper with some multiple choice questions right so so this is mcv for you right so we have 10 questions on this test paper all multiple choice excellent questions however every year one of these will be in your test paper so the idea here is to make a sample test paper from what we have rather than innovate something right I don't really agree with this strategy, but that's what is being done. What should I do? You, I hope, understand my position, right? So, anyway, let's begin with my test paper. So, I have picked up four questions from previous test papers. I think they're pretty good questions. You can actually pause the video, copy these questions. I'm calling this as part A right and then in part B I have few more uh, in which I have three-dimensional figures also we are just talking about basic vectors properties so these are another four questions that makes it eight all the questions all the questions are from previous test papers right so I haven't created anything new from my side Let's be very clear about it. So I'd like you to now try them out and then look into my solutions and see if that helps you to perform better in your test. Thanks. The four questions here are question number one. Unit vectors U and V have angle of 30 degrees between them. Sketch the vectors 2U minus V. Part B is determine the magnitude of 2U minus V and C is for what condition can u plus v equal to 0. So I should write 0 vector here. Question number 2 is unit vectors u, v and w that are non-collinear determine the condition for the sum of these three vectors to be 0 vector. Question number 3 is vector a, b has endpoints A minus 3, 1 and B is 1, 3. Determine the coordinates of point C if AC equals to 3 times AB. Question number 4. We are given a parallelogram here. For the diagram, write PQ, PQ in terms of A and B. So, so the A is from A to B and vector B is from A to P, and P is the midpoint of BC. Right? So these are the four questions for you. You can pause the video, answer these questions, and then look into my suggestions. Now let us look into the solution of each of these questions. Question number one. Unit vectors U and V have angle of 30 degrees between them. Sketch the vector 2u minus v. So, so what we are given here is a vector u, let us see, and a vector v. The angle between them is 30 degrees. That is what we are given. Now what we need to do here is to sketch a vector 2u minus v. So, so let's sketch 2u minus v. 2u means that the vector will have 
will be in the same direction as u but twice the magnitude right so so on this scale we can say this is 2u right so that is u times u so length is twice vector v remains same minus v we have to figure out so we'll say this is vector v for us so we have here 2u and this is vector v now what is the vector 2u minus v so 2u minus v will be vector which will be from here to there 2u minus v is that clear so this is the vector 2u minus v so that is part a the angle between u and v remains 30 degrees as it is given to us part b is determine the magnitude of this vector so to find the magnitude of 2u minus v we can apply cosine law So we can say magnitude of 2u minus v is equal to square root of square of these two magnitudes, magnitude of v square plus magnitude of 2u square minus 2 times magnitude of v, magnitude of u, I mean 2, let me write 2 now here, <laughs> okay, cos of angle between them which is 30 degrees perfect so the magnitudes are one since we are given unit vectors correct so magnitudes are one so we have one square plus this becomes two square minus two times one times two times cos of 30 degrees correct so let's use the calculator and now so square root of 1 plus 2 square is 4 minus 2 times 2 times cos of 30 degrees is equal to 1.239 something right so let me approximate this to 1.2 So that becomes the magnitude of 2u minus v. Correct? So that is our part b. Now let's look into the third part, which is for what condition can u plus v equals to 0? So as you can see, u and v are at an angle of 30 degrees. So for c, u plus v equals to 0 vector is not possible. right so since we have angle of 30 degrees between them right since they are at 30 degrees right this could be possible if we were considering two vectors which were kind of like this do you see that so then it was possible is it okay so if you have vector a and vector b and let's say their magnitudes are unit vectors then it was possible for two vectors not in this case so i hope that is clear right now let's look into the second question which is kind of related but interesting it says unit vectors u v and w that are non-collinear that means they are not along the same line they are given to you are given okay determine the condition for u plus v plus w equals to zero is that possible so what we just saw that u plus v cannot be equal to zero vector however if we have three of them can we have zero vector now this is a very important question to understand now this is possible the answer is yes can you tell me how now this is a very good question it is possible if you have let us say v u vector let's say this is my u vector and somehow if i am able to make a triangle 
which could be kind of like this. That's the second vector. And if the third vector returns to the same position, in that case, you can see that sum of u, v, and w is equal to 0. Is it okay? So if you can form equilateral triangle, then it is possible. Do you see that? Only then it is possible. Now if we form an equilateral triangle, then the angle between u and v should be this angle, 120 degrees. Do you see that? Angle we always measure when we place tail to tail. In this case, also the angle between these two vectors is 120 degrees. Right. So the answer now is very clear that yes, if u, v, and w can form an equilateral triangle. So that means the angle between them is 120 degrees as shown in the figure. Right? So is that clear to you? So this is extremely important question seen so many times in test papers. I hope that will help you. Right. So now let's look into question number three. It says vector AB has endpoints A minus 3, 1 and B is 1, 3. Determine the coordinates of point C if AC is 3 times AB. So let's sketch it just to give you a better idea of the whole thing. So what we are given here is vector AB whose point is let's say minus 3, let's say this is 1, 2, 3 and minus 3 and 1. Okay, so that becomes the point. And B is 1 and 3. Let's say this is this is 1 and let's say this is 3. Okay. So the vector AB we are talking about is this vector. Perfect. Where point A is minus 3, 1 and B is 1, 3. What we want is a point C which is three times that means it has to be collinear right so let's say let's say up to this point okay so this gives you the vector c and we don't know what those points are we need to find this point of vector c is it okay so as per the diagram they have to be collinear only then we have a c equals to three times a b perfect how do you find this point the one of the easy ways of finding this point is to look at the position vectors, right? So, so we know the coordinate points. Whenever you have coordinate points, you can think about joining them with the origin. So you get position vectors. Is it okay? So look at this diagram. So this is position vector. Is it okay? Okay. OC. So, so we have now position vectors. So whenever you have from the origin, they are called position vectors, right? OA, OB, and OC. Perfect. These are position vectors. Do you see how they are related? Let's figure this out. We want to find what OC is, right? So OC, we need to figure out what it is. OC is OA plus AC is it okay plus AC now we know AC is 3 times AB so it is OA plus 3 times AB that is what OC is what is OA coordinates of A? because that is minus 3 minus 0 1 minus 0 so you get the same point so so I'll write this as let me write like this minus 3 and 1 plus 3 times a to B. Now A to B will be, this is B is 1, 3, right? So, so A to B is how much? So B x values is 1, so it is 1 minus 
minus 3, then 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1, that is a to b, right? So when I say a to b, then basically it is x values difference, right? Difference of x values and difference of y values. That is what it is, right? So that is what we have written here. So that gives you minus 3 and 1 plus 3 times that becomes 4 this is 2 right so that could be written as minus 3 3 times 4 is 12 1 plus 6 right so which is 9 and 6 plus 1 is 7 so that is how we do vector addition when you are given the coordinates so that gives you the coordinates of point C directly right so therefore C point is 9 7 for us is it okay so that is how we are going to solve it so it is a very interesting way of doing it and I hope at this initial stages if you learn such methods that will be very good for you now here is the last question of this first part part A question 4 for the diagram write PQ in terms of A and B. So we need to write PQ in terms of A and B. Now we are given a parallelogram, right? So we have a we are given A, B, C, Q, right? So that's a parallelogram given to us. So opposite sides are parallel. P is the midpoint. P is midpoint of B, C, right? So that's why we are saying that these two sides are equal. And these arrows indicate that it is a parallelogram. I hope it's clear, right? Now, we have to find PQ, what you could write PQ as. PQ could be written as AQ minus AP, right? So we can write this as AQ minus AP, I mean, minus AP. So that is how you can write PQ as. So this minus that. Now, AP we know is B, but we have to write AQ in terms of A and B. That is what it is. And we know AQ is actually equals to BC, right? So we can write this as BC minus AP. Okay. Now, these two are parallel sides, and that is why they are in the same direction, and their magnitude is also same. So they are same vectors. Now, BC could be written as twice BP minus AP, right? Now, here, what is twice BP? B to P is how much? B to P is twice. Let me write in terms of vectors. We are saying B to P, this direction, is B minus A, is B minus A. That is twice BP. And what is A to P equals to? A to P is given to us as B. Do you see that? So that is what we get. Now let's open this bracket. So scalar multiple. We get 2B minus 2A minus B. And that gives you 2B minus B. Let's rearrange. Commutative property. So that's kind of a review on properties. 2B minus P is just P. And then we have minus 2A. So we have written PQ in terms of B minus 2A. So that's the answer. So P to Q is equals to B minus 2A. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Right? So that gives you some kind of review on the first four chapters which we did on vectors. I hope the first half of the paper was very useful. This is part B where we will now solve question number 5, 6, 7 and 8. 
Question number 5 is, the prism is bisected by the xy plane, the point P234 is given on the plane, that part is missing, <coughs> determine C. So you have to find the location of point C. P is given to us as 234, so that's the position vector, right? So this is your xy z plane. You need to find the coordinates for point C. Question number six is, given vector u equals to 3x7 and v 5xi plus xj, solve for x if the sum of u and v is magnitude of the sum of u and v is 10x. Question number seven is, triangle PQR is an equilateral triangle and O is the centroid of the triangle. Express PO in terms of PQ and PR. Question number eight. A bird flies 50 meters from its nest to a feeder, which is on a bearing of 120 degrees. From the feeder, it flies to another flower, which is 30 meter away on a bearing of 170 degrees. Find the displacement of the bird from its nest. You can pause the video, answer these questions, and then look into my suggestions. Right? So let's begin with question number five now. So we are given a prism which is bisected by xy plane. So that means this is right at the center, right? The point P coordinates are 2, 3, and 4. So if I'm saying that this is bisecting, that means uh, this point here, let me call this as AB, should be as much below as above. That means we are looking at the Z position, right? So if the total height is 4, then somewhere in middle, it should be how much? That's what you need to figure out, right? So it would be half of that, right? Now, it is, actually speaking, if you see from the xy plane, let's locate the point P here. When I say point P is 2, 3, 4, it means that from the xy plane, you go 2 units towards x. That is 2 units towards x. And then you go three units towards y, so that is three units towards y. And then you go four units up, and then you go four units up. So you reach a point which is two, three, four. Correct? So that is how you get that point. So clearly, now here what are we doing? We are actually moving, instead of four units up, from here, we are moving four units down. So that should be minus four, right? Moving four units down. Perfect. So basically, to reach C, I'm going two units towards X. So, so we are looking for how to reach C, right? So first we do two units towards X. And then as far as Y is concerned, we are actually moving from here three units as given here, right? So we are moving three units towards Y, right? So, so from here, you could also say Z is down minus four. You could go like this. So let's make this as kind of like this. So let's say as far as X is concerned, you move two units here. See, we we'll look at B first, okay? And then you go down four units. So that down is from Z position. And we are going like this in the Y direction. And that Y direction is three units, right? So, so from here you reach OB, is that okay? So you reach B. Now from OB to reach C, you go minus two. So since you're moving in that direction, you go minus two. Do you understand this point? So, so OC should be two minus two as zero, 
3 minus 4 does make sense to you. So that is how you could get the point C. The other way thinking about C is like this, which is simpler. You do not move along X, right? Now, since you understand this, you move along Y, so you move along Y, which is 4 units along Y. So, so what we are doing is we are not moving along. So as you can see, to go from O to C, we may go along the y axis first so that is four units right so that is four units so this is four and then come down as far below as we had gone up which is minus four minus four i'm sorry this is three units that is three units right y value so you go three units to the right and then come down four units down so the coordinates for C should be 0, 3, minus 4. So get 0, 3, minus 4 as the coordinates for point C. So I hope the concept is absolutely clear, right? You'll also see that point C lies in YZ plane, right? It lies in YZ plane. Question number 6. We are given vectors U and V we have to solve for x if magnitude of u plus v is 10x, right? So let's rewrite. We are given vectors u as 3x plus 7, vector v as 5x. We could write in the similar way, 5x, this is the i component along the x-axis, and xj means y component. So when you add them, what do you get? So when you add u plus v, we get some of these two, some of these two. That is 3x plus 5x and 7 plus x. This is what you get when you add these two vectors. And when we say that this sum is equal to 10x, we really mean that, let me now write down this sum, that 3x plus, let me re rewrite this as 8x and 7 plus x, okay. So we really mean that 8x, the x component square plus the y component square, square root, is equal to 10x, right? So that is what we mean. So let's, let's solve this. It is... 8x, 8 is 64, 64x squared, plus 7 is 49, 49 uh, plus 14x, and then plus x squared equals 2. I mean, what I can do here is, let me do square both sides. So in that case, we'll not bother about the square root, and then right here, 100x squared. Is it okay? Now we have a quadratic equation to solve. So we can now solve this quadratic equation. Bringing all terms to the right will give us 100x squared minus 64x squared minus x squared minus 14x minus 49 equals to 0. Right? So that becomes the quadratic equation. We can always use the calculator. 100 minus 64 minus 1 gives you 35. So we have 35x squared minus 14x minus 49 equals to 0. Right? So that becomes the quadratic equation. Now to solve for x, we can use quadratic formula. Let me push it a bit. So the value of x can be calculated as minus of b which is 14 plus minus b square which is 14 square minus 4 times ac 35 times 49 with a negative sign okay negative sign divided by twice 35 so that gives you 14 plus minus let's calculate the square root part so that minus makes it plus actually, right? That minus makes this plus. So let me rewrite this. 14 squared plus 4 times 35 times 49 
over 70 okay so the square root part here is 14 square plus 4 times 35 times 49 which is 84 so we get 14 plus minus 80 84 over 70 right so we have two possible solutions so if I do 84 plus 14 divide by 70 I get a value which is 7 over 5 and if I do 14 minus 84 and then divide by 70 I get a value which is minus 1 correct so there are two values possible values of x and so my answer is x equals to minus 1 or 7 over 5 so I hope that is absolutely clear so it's an interesting question you are given the magnitude of sum of two vectors and that is how you can find it remember you have to list both the values to get full marks I hope that helps question number seven triangle PQR is an equilateral triangle and O is the centroid of the triangle express PO in terms of PQ and PR so let us sketch a the scenario right so this is an equilateral triangle PQR okay so let's write this as P this is Q and this is R point O is the centroid centroid means where all the medians meet right so so if I join this point so these two are equal that is a centroid so here I if I locate a midpoint here and I join that so that becomes the centroid right so that is how you locate the centroid so we are given centroid as O now we need to write how to represent PO that means this PO vector PO in terms of PQ and PR that is what we need to figure out right. that's the question so we need to re represent I mean sorry uh, we need to represent PO right now since the centroid you get by joining the midpoint so this becomes a midpoint let me call this point M now clearly uh, PM will be half of PQ correct PM is going to be half of PQ since it is the midpoint perfect we need to find what PO is PO now one more property is very important to understand is that centroid is two-thirds away that means this is in the ratio of 2 is to 1 I mean you get the idea so the distance of centroid is two-third away from each point right so that is the ratio so what I'm trying to say here is that uh, if I'm writing a P O I could write centroid is two-third away from vertex right centroid is two-third away from the vertex now let's see how to use this property right so I can write PO as equal to PM plus MO PM plus MO that is how I can write POS but I need to write in terms of PQ and PR so we need to write PQ and PR this combination okay so what I can say is that uh, PM is half of PQ so I know that part it's half of PQ that makes sense okay how about MO now MO is one third of MR right so we can write MO as one third of MR right yes we could do that now what is MR 
एम आर एस पी आर माइनस पी एम यू नो एम आर एस पी आर माइनस पी एम करेक्ट देर फोर आई कोड राइट दिस एस हाफ ऑफ पी क्यू प्लस वन थर्ड ऑफ पी आर माइनस पी एम Since P M is half of P Q, we have all the terms in terms of P Q and P R. Do you realize that? P M is half of P Q. So we have all the terms in terms of P Q and P R. Perfect. Now let's just do some maths to figure out the exact answer. So P O equals to half of P Q. and then when you multiply this and take away you get 1/6 of pq plus 1/3 of pr is it okay so that becomes you can take a common denominator of 6 and what you get here is 3 minus 1 pq plus 1/3 of pr or 3 minus 1 is 2 2 over 6 of pq plus 1/3 of pr or you can write this as 1/3 of pq plus 1/3 of pr is it okay so basically you got a relation which says that po is equals to 1/3 of pq plus pr so that is your final answer right so i hope that helps so that is how you can actually represent po in uh, terms of the other two vectors right so let's move on to question number 8 we are at the end of our test paper question number 8 the very last we are going to learn the concept of using bearing angle to solve questions question number 8 is A bird flies 50 meters from its nest to a feeder, which is on a bearing of 120 degrees. From the feeder, it flies to another flower, which is 30 meters away, on a bearing of 170 degrees. Find the displacement of the bird from its nest. So let's try to sketch the scenario. Let's say that's the coordinate plane. bearing angle is the angle from the north so when we say 120 it really means this is 90 and 30 more right so so that becomes 120 so this is a bearing of 120 and the bird flies 50 meters on this so let's take a scale so that this length is 50 meters now from this point it flies to another flower which is 30 meters away slightly shorter than this but at a bearing of 170 let's again sketch our coordinate plane here right now in that case 170 is just 10 degrees less than 180 so the bearing is 170 kind of like this close to 180 so we'll just draw something like this a shorter line to indicate that it is lesser length now we can label this as 120 degrees this is 170 degrees that much is 50 meters and this is 30 meters what do we need to find here is the resultant which is basically the distance from the starting point which is the nest of the bird to this point so so this is this we are, we are looking for is this is right so let's call this as displacement d for the bird from the starting point to the end point to find this we can use cosine law perfect right and to use cosine law we need to find that angle that is what is critical so we are going to use cosine law but we need to find this angle theta 
So let's calculate this angle theta first. Now, if you see with respect to the first position, we have two vertical lines going north and a transverse line. That means this angle from here to this place is 120, right? So it is 120 degrees. And then the other line is 10 short. This is this point is 10 degrees, correct? 180 minus 70. So we add this 10 degrees to 120. So theta basically is equal to 130 degrees. Is that clear? That's critical. So we have a triangle whose two sides are 50 and 30. We need to find D, displacement. So the displacement is square root of square of one length, which is 50, plus 30 square minus 2 times 50 times 30 times cos of the angle which is 130 degrees that's it so that is how you can get displacement let's do it so we have square root 50 square plus 30 square minus 2 times 50 times 30 times cos of 130 bracket close equals to 72.99 so we get answer 72.99 the units are meters this could be rounded to 73 meters correct so that becomes the answer so that is how you can calculate but I hope you understand and appreciate how we calculated this particular angle with this, we come to the end of first test on vectors and their properties. I hope you find it useful and interesting. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. I have a playlist on practicing similar questions and I'll encourage you highly to look into 6.1, 6.2 playlist so that you really get all the concepts and perform better. Thanks for watching. If you share and like my videos, that'd be great. Thank you and all the best.